Stoichiometry notes, example six, second year chemistry, chem two. Aluminum chloride reacts with magnesium sulfate to produce. Please write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. Welcome back. Here's the equation. Make sure you've balanced it. Here's the equation balanced. Okay, we're going to start with how many grams of aluminum chloride will react with excess magnesium sulfate if 85.1 liters of aluminum sulfate is produced. We have a density. All right, as we look at this problem, we're going to figure out what our starting point is. Remember that we must start something with a mass, a volume, or a mole, and we must have the limiting reactant. So it tells me 85.1 liters, that's a volume, won't start with the density, so the only option I have is to start with this, 85.1 liters. So we're going to start with 85.1 liters of aluminum sulfate. Okay, and i get got to get to grams of aluminum chloride. That's where I'm trying to go. So i got to get rid of liters, okay? To get rid of liters, I'm going to have to use density. Remember that density is our pathway between mass and volume. I can't use my balanced equation or the periodic table until I get to grams. So I must get to grams from volume using density as my pathway before I can do that. So I know that for every one liter of anything, there's a thousand milliliters. So one liter of aluminum sulfate equals a thousand milliliters of aluminum sulfate. But my density is 2.6 grams per centimeter cubed. Remember what that looks like. That is really saying the same thing as 2.67 grams over one centimeters cubed. Remember that this forward slash says that we're putting it underneath with a one. Okay, so I gotta get to centimeters cubed, but I know that for every one milliliter of something, there's a centimeter cubed of it. So one milliliter of aluminum sulfate equals a centimeter cubed of aluminum sulfate. Now I can use my density ratio to flip from volume into mass, and I can write this this way, or I could write it the other way. I could flip it, meaning one centimeters cubed equals 2.67 grams. So we need to see which way we need that. We need it the right side way up. So we put centimeters cubed here so they cancel, and grams of aluminum sulfate goes on top. Now I can use the periodic table to get from grams to moles. We know there are 342.17 grams of aluminum sulfate. Remember, that's two aluminums, three sulfurs, and 12 oxygens for every one mole. Remember, the periodic table number is always grams per one mole. And then we can mole-mole shuffle. We're going from one mole of aluminum sulfate from our balanced equation for every two moles of aluminum chloride from our balanced equation. And then the final thing we can do here is to go from moles to grams, because remember, we're trying to get to grams. Currently, we would have been in moles, but we know for every one mole of aluminum chloride, Periodic table number is 133.33 grams of aluminum chloride. When we multiply the top numbers across the top, hit equals, divide by 342.17, we get this number, 177,000, with only three sig figs, or in other words, round it to three sig figs. So we start it with volume. We convert it using volume conversions. We use the density to get us from volume into mass, and then it's an ordinary stoichiometry problem. It says item X is 45.2% aluminum sulfate by mass. Item X is 45.2% aluminum sulfate by mass. So then we're going to think about what our part over whole is. We know we have to have 45.2 grams over 100 grams. Now what's our part and what's our whole? Our whole is X. Item X has... 45.2% of it is aluminum sulfate, so this is going to be aluminum sulfate. So there's my relationship. If you read this, item X is 45.2% aluminum sulfate. So 45.2, this is a decimal here, grams in every 100 grams of X. So X possesses this much aluminum sulfate, so that's my part over my whole. Now we can use that relationship to get X gone, or to get rid of X, or to calculate it away. So that's what we did here. Okay, now we have grams of aluminum sulfate, so we can use the periodic table number. So we're going to use grams, so we're going to come down here first and use grams of aluminum sulfate. Why grams down here? So it cancels per every one mole, because we know the periodic table number is always grams per one mole. Okay, now that we have moles on top, we can mole mole shuffle, just like we learned in the first set of notes. So I know there's one mole of aluminum sulfate for every two moles of aluminum chlorine. Okay, then going on, once we get moles of aluminum chloride, now I can use the periodic table number to get grams of aluminum chloride, because remember, we're trying to get to liters. In order to get to volume, we have to get to mass. Our pathway between mass and volume is density. 
So if I have one, I can get to the other if I have the density. I hit, now I need to get to liter, so I gotta get to mass and use density to get there. I can use the periodic table first though to go from moles to grams. Then I can use the density of aluminum chloride. Let's find that. That is right here. Let's talk about how that's written again, just as a review, because I know my kids struggle the most with this. So this is gonna be 2.48 grams slash one centimeters cubed. Remember this slash says this is underneath with a one. So that's how my relationship is but I gotta flip it to cancel units, right? The rule is that the 2.48 grams must stay with grams and the one centimeter cube has to stay together. So I put, put this, I flip this because that's the relationship. Remember the 12 inches to a foot, one foot equals 12 inches analogy there, or relationship. And so now I have centimeters cubed, but I need liters. So to get to liters, I gotta take the fact that I know there's one centimeter cubed for, one, for every one milliliter. There's always one centimeter cube of any, every, anything per one milliliter. And then there's a thousand milliliters of anything per liter. Once we do that, we'll get this with three sig figs. Okay, looking at example 6C. Here we have example 6C. It said, in how many grams of item Y are produced if 34.5 grams of magnesium sulfate reacts with excess aluminum chloride? Okay, so we know we have, then we have uh, item Y is 21% magnesium chloride by mass, we have a density, we have another density, and we have a third density. Okay, so we have a mass, a percent, and three densities. Remember, every problem must start with a mass, a volume, or a mole, so we know we're gonna start with magnesium sulfate. Okay, so we're gonna start with magnesium sulfate, 35.45 grams of magnesium sulfate. We're trying to get to item Y. Item Y is not part of this, so we gotta figure out what item Y is part of. Item Y is part of what? Let's look at our sentence. It says item Y is 21.5% magnesium chloride by mass. So we're gonna say then, let me just get some space for me to write here. We can then say that we have, again, just like we kind of did before, 21.5 grams. That's my percent over 100 grams. So now this is a percent. Not even thinking about anything else. This is 21.5, I have 100. I got 21.5%. Now, what's my part? What's my whole? Let's talk about what our part and what our whole is. We know that Y possesses magnesium chloride, so that's my part. My whole is Y. Okay, so 21 point grams of magnesium chloride for 100 grams of Y. That's a relationship that I may need. I'm gonna keep that there just in case I need it. We've gotta get rid of and get to item Y. To get to Y, we have to get to magnesium chloride first because that's the relationship between Y and magnesium chloride. There. So in order to get to Y, we got to get to magnesium chloride. So we got to go from magnesium sulfate to magnesium chloride. I know I can start with magnesium sulfate because it told me that that um, aluminum chloride was in excess. Okay, so we're going to use the periodic table number to get out of magnesium sulfate grams and into moles. Periodic table number, now I have moles on top, I can almost shuffle. I'm going from magnesium sulfate so it cancels to magnesium chloride. And then I can use the fact that I know the periodic table number for magnesium chloride. So now I'm getting to grams of magnesium chloride. That's what I needed to to get to Y. And then I can finally use my percentage of magnesium chloride to 100 grams of Y as a relationship. So magnesium chloride has to go down here, 25, excuse me, 21.5 grams magnesium chloride. So that's why I have 21.5 grams magnesium chloride on bottom so that it cancels 100. Remember, I can write this either way, flip it or keep it upright. So I had to flip it so that units would cancel because I cannot change what goes with 100, what goes with 21. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the right percentage. So if you notice, grams of magnesium sulfate cancel, moles of magnesium sulfate cancel, moles of chlorine, magnesium chloride cancel, grams of magnesium chloride cancel, leaving me left with grams of Y. I have finished. Notice in this problem, I gave you densities. You didn't need them. That can happen in problems. If you do this math, you should get 127 grams with three sig figs. That concludes our notes for example six.